I really enjoy finding and playing more obscure video games. There's something so interesting about games that were made and released that have basically no fanbase nowadays. Finding out if these games are hidden gems or if they've been forgotten for a reason is incredibly intriguing. Our journey started with Singularity, a not so obscure FPS from Raven Software that was actually really well made and had some really neat gameplay mechanics. Then our attention was turned to You Are Empty, a Ukrainian FPS from 2006 that was pretty terrible from a gameplay and story perspective, but was strangely entertaining for all the wrong reasons. Now our journey brings us to a game that is so bizarre that I really don't know how to explain it. Necrovision is a 2009 FPS that was made by like 15 different companies. I'm assuming the actual developers were 1C company, but I could be wrong. Either way, that Eastern European jank is in full focus with Necrovision. To give you a brief idea on what's going on with the story, the year is 1916. The Great War was ravaging Europe and he plays an American known as Simon Buckner, an American soldier that was recently recruited into the British Army. I, I don't know, man. The grittiness of the First World War is done pretty well. Everything is dark and dirty, the bullets flying through the air in the distance, and the German soldiers surrounding you on all sides sets the tone that this game might be going down a somewhat normal route with its story. As you progress through the game some more, passing by soldiers with shell shock and mowing down those pesky Germans, the game introduces zombies. Alright. I'm a huge fan of Origins, so this seems pretty neat. <laughs> Clearly, the Germans must have been doing a bit of experimenting, and it quickly went wrong as you see German soldiers fighting off the undead. But also fighting you together with the zombies sometimes? Eh, who cares? You gotta fight off zombies, a necromancer, flying electricity dudes, huge monstrosities, and you aren't even an hour into the game yet. This all sounds like complete nonsense right now, but don't worry. It only gets more confusing from here. To keep myself from going on a tangent, this game is basically two different games that were poorly connected together. You have the first half, which consists of some strange supernatural elements being paired with the hell that was the First World War. This seems pretty interesting to me, as the First World War isn't a setting that was explored as often as others, especially in the late 2000s. And then you have the second half, which is... This game feels like it kind of assumes you already know what's going on, but you absolutely don't and it's hilarious, because why are there vampires below the earth's surface? Why are there dragons? Who is this big skull dude in the sky? Why was the stupid protagonist the one to save the world? It literally doesn't make sense, and it doesn't matter because this shit is so funny. This game feels like a 4 hour long car wreck, and I'm strapped in for all of it. Let's discuss a bit of the gameplay. It really ain't the best, but it is much better than You Are Empty, so that's a few bonus points for Necrovision. There is a foundation for a good game here, with a decent feel to firing at enemies, the screen shaking while you sprint, the diverse set of guns at your disposal. There is a competent game here, but where it all falls apart is with basically everything else. The levels go from tight corridors and trenches to massive open stages, where hundreds upon hundreds of enemies pour out and sprint at mock speed right at you. That sounds like you should die immediately, but the health system is so inconsistent that I would tank hundreds of bullets and it wouldn't make a dent to my health. That doesn't mean that you can't die though. You can, but the only times I did die was when massive enemies would slam their fists into my head, or 3000 enemies would swarm me and I didn't have an explosive to get them off me. The only explosive I had was my processor having to cope with 400 enemies in a single room. Why couldn't I just shoot them? I did, but the enemies are bullet sponges and can take so many shots before going down, which made me realize. The main character is a bullet sponge, the enemies are bullet sponges, it's a war of attrition, just like World War I. Because of how many bullets enemies would take before going down, you would basically have to aim for their head all the time. Which doesn't sound that difficult, but when there's explosions happening all the time, and the effects like motion blur making it difficult to even see what's happening, it's really difficult to aim your shots. Not to mention how quickly this game can go from being so dark you can barely see, to having my retinas melt out of my skull while 30 explosions happen right in front of me. It was genuinely painful to look at sometimes. Headshots can be pretty hard to pull off, but if you do, there'll be some incoherent text describing the headshot like jiggle bells or bestial lobotomy. Or if you just open fired on an enemy with a pistol, brute willis. The weapons in this game are okay. The World War I weapons were decent when going through the early levels, but they became pretty crappy once you start fighting these abhorrent beasts. You unlock this glove thingy at the halfway mark of the game. They hype this thing up like it'll one-shot enemies with ease, but it just kinda sucked. 
You can melee enemies, and when you do melee an enemy, you gain a fireball attack that is really helpful, but having to melee an enemy in the first place made me not care enough to bother. They don't want to see you with the ball of flames. The hoes hate it when you bring this out. The vampire weapons are also just okay. The SMG and the grenade launcher are the only ones I use because the shotgun is too weak and fires too slow. The SMG fires quickly with a huge magazine, but is also pretty weak, and enemies would take nearly a whole magazine before going down. Like I mentioned earlier, the level design, while very interesting looking, plays so poorly. Wide open levels with little cover and enemies pouring in non-stop really make it feel like the devs were padding out the game's length, like how you couldn't sprint and you are empty. While a lot of the levels were wide open and boring, some were so difficult to traverse. One of the coolest features of Necrovision is having no idea where the hell to go. Once I reached the levels in the Vampire City, navigating the areas became such a chore, especially after you've been swarmed by 80 enemies and have no clue which way is up anymore. There's a cutoff PNG of a compass in the top right corner, but that barely helps. There are boss battles in this game, and they suck for the most part. The bosses will spam attacks constantly, making it so difficult to fight them. This isn't an Elden Ring dodge attacks and hit the enemy when they are between attacks sort of thing. It's more like, just keep running and shooting and hope that you don't get eviscerated while a bunch of smaller enemies attack you as well. The only boss fight that actually was interesting was when you fight the Zimmerman guy. I like you had to destroy the equipment that was healing him. And the surprising amount of environmental destruction in this level really solidified this fight as easily the best boss fight in the game. Another thing that is annoying about the gameplay is the incredible amount of glitches. From small little annoyances to actual game-breaking bugs that required us to use command prompts, it's got it all. A constant was the fact that the player character would regularly get stuck on dead bodies. This persisted throughout the entire game, but once I reached the later sections of Necrovision, the bugs went from annoying to making me want to eat my monitor. Multiple times throughout these levels, I would have to die or reload because a cutscene failed to trigger. Another time, a switch for a bridge wouldn't activate, which pretty much softlocked me. The only way to progress at this point was to enable god mode and parkour across the train tracks. This is why you probably notice how I'm not taking any damage fighting this huge demon dude, and that's because once I found out about god mode, I just bomb rushed through the last hour of this game. Trust me, you would too having to deal with the BS that was those level designs, bosses, and glitches. You could call this cheating, but this definitely took more skill than walking across a bridge. Respect my skill. Yeah, what he said. Now would come the part in the video where I try to explain the story and talk about what an interesting narrative this game has. I would honestly love to do that, but I can't. I had no idea what was happening the entire time. I know something is going down with the German army and whatever experiments they were doing to turn people into zombies. The game just moves way too quickly to even remotely understand what's going on. I honestly couldn't tell you how we went from trench warfare to underground vampire cities to fighting the king of hell, but I did I guess. There are these segments in between levels where a graphic novel style cutscene would play out, and characters would just kind of vomit nonsense information at you. It's hard to tell if the devs had a grander vision for the lore, or if they just didn't give a damn and threw in as much fantasy jargon as possible. It would be nice if the plot didn't move at an absolute breakneck speed, or if the character dialogue was even remotely audible. These are not luxuries we are afforded though. Instead, we are blessed with one C's gift to all of mankind, Simon Buckner. Now, credit where credit's due, Simon's voice actor actually did one hell of a job. It couldn't have been easy to portray the character's ability to become Southern mid-conversation. King Corpse? Eh? How long have I been out? Do I look like a bloody cuckoo clock? Hey, are you okay? How the hell are you gonna live with yourself? For the rest of your life, you wake up with their screams in your ears. I feel like Simon embodies what everyone outside the US perceives Americans to be like. Loud, annoying, constantly cracking one-liners while dual-wielding machine guns. Not that inaccurate, honestly. It's funny because Simon perfectly encapsulates the tone of the game, and how the player probably feels. He couldn't give a rat's ass about whatever the hell is happening in the story either. Well, that's got him. Well cooked. And easy on the onions. He seems just as confused and his main priority is blowing up as many people as possible. So what did I think of Necrovision? Honestly, this game blows. It's completely disorganized with its story, levels, gameplay, and even the main character's personality. It feels like two mediocre games smushed together to create one incoherent mess, with some one-liners thrown in just for the hell of it. While I think it could be incredibly entertaining from a let's mock this game standpoint, I think your money would be best spent elsewhere. However, if you do want to play this game, it is available on Steam. Though, wait for a sale. I got it for 99 cents, and at that price, I guess it's worth it. There was also a second game that was released a few years later, and if you guys want me to, I could maybe make a video seeing what that game's all about. Either way, thanks for watching.